Let me tell you about the most pivotal moment in my software career. I can attribute this exact moment to being the reason why I was able to crush my interview with Google, Microsoft, and Blue Origin. I couldn't even believe that these things were achievable. Like getting a job at Google, pff, I can't do that. But after this moment, I was able to get the confidence and the skills that I needed to completely shit on those interviews. And this is the origin of Data Structures Pop. So how did it start for me? Well, I clearly remember one day at my university, three Google software engineers came to visit sort of for like a recruiting event and everyone was all hyped about it. All my classmates were like, man, I'm gonna go network with that person. I'm gonna go become that person's best friend, get the job. I was just like, whoa, like a Google huh? software developer. It was like a Pokemon or something, just something I wasn't ever going to see in my entire life. So when they came, they told us about what it is and what it takes to get a job there. But in the back of my head, I was still always thinking, Man, that's just not me. I'm never gonna be able to get those opportunities. I specifically remember thinking that thought when there's the part where they're doing a mock interview. Two of the Googlers went up to the whiteboard and then one of them asked a question. Write me a function that can find me the path from A to B. And literally my mouth just dropped because I couldn't even comprehend on where to begin. This is where I was like, I'm never gonna become a Googler. And it was so crazy because it was like a magic show, literally. The other developer just started to go through the problem, break it down into the different pieces, solve each part, write this amazing function, this algorithm, using the right data structures to find the shortest path. And for me, this was a magic show. This was like when you're a little kid and you see the magician pull the bunny out of the hat and you're just absolutely amazed. So after that, I was determined to have a conversation with that software developer. I was determined to go up to him and ask him like, how can I get this? So that's exactly what I did. I was super scared. I was super nervous walking up to the guy. I remember my hands were shaky, palms were a little bit sweaty, mom spaghetti. And then all of a sudden I go up to him and then I kind of just ask him, hey man, like honestly, I, I've never seen myself being able to work at Google just because it's been like a dream for you. Like, how were you able to do it? And then he kind of started to tell me his story. He was telling me how he was a developer. He started working at a company. In fact, he graduated from the same university that I did. And that gave me hope. And he started working at some company, moved to another one three years later. And finally, Google recruiter reached out to him. He had three weeks to prep for the interview. And what he did for those three weeks was he went hard into the basics of programming, the data structure and algorithms. Literally, he told me his schedule was he would work nine to five. After five, from five to 8 p.m., Monday through Friday, he would do whiteboarding problems just solving problem after problem after problem. Then on the weekend, he would do six to eight hours each day, both Saturday and Sunday, of more problem solving. And when he told me that, when he told me that, that is when everything changed for me. Because that is when I realized if this amazing developer in front of me was able to get there, you know, starting from the similar position where I'm at, from the same university. It's not like a huge university. It's not a prestigious university. In fact, it's a university that has a 100% acceptance rate. What? Like no one gets rejected going into the university that I went to, right? He was able to go there and end up at Google. And not only that, when I realized that data structures and algorithms was simply just a skill, that's when everything changed for me. This is that pivotal moment. Because I realized it's a skill, I realized I can learn that skill. I realized I can build that confidence because confidence comes from one thing and one thing only. How well do you know something? When you know something to a high level, every detail, you're going to be super confident when you perform that task. And that's what I realized. I just had to do more repetition. So from that day forward, every single day for 30 minutes a day, I solved one algorithm problem and I did it again and again and again and again. I'm not going to lie. I missed some days, but I just did it over and over and over again. And that allowed me to start to build so much competence that I could distinguish what are the different things that I have to do to solve these different problems. I was able to show up with the confidence. I was able to crush those interviews and I was able to get the job offers. And the rest is history. That's how Data Structures Papi was born. I am the one, the one, your son, don't need the guns. Of course, I'm not a guru, guys. I'm just a regular person. I just developed the right skill set. So what I want to get to right now is I want to make the magic show. I'm going to solve the exact same problem that that Google developer solved in front of me that got me inspired to take action because I want to inspire you to be able to go out there and build the skill set that you need. So let's go ahead and jump into that problem, guys. And here we are finding the shortest path from the top left to the bottom right of this array. I'm not going to lie. This is probably not the exact same problem, 
that they did. But let's go ahead and dive into this. And let's go ahead and solve this problem. So what I always want to start off doing is kind of replicating the problem. Here I get on my whiteboard and to replicate the same array that they have in the leak code example. So I have a great starting point. Now what I start to notice is there's going to be a specific pattern here. It's going to get me the shortest path. Since I'm going from the top left all the way to the bottom right, I can only go to the right or down from each square to the next square. Knowing this, well, I could create another array that at every specific position, that's going to represent the minimum sum needed to get to that point. Here, the first value in the top left will just be the same from the original array. The first row and the first column will also be unique. Because we can only travel in one direction, we will just get the value at that same position, adding the sum of the previous position. So that gets us the minimum path because there's only one path. However, when we start to look at the other positions, you could take two different paths, one coming from the top and one coming from the left. So on those, we're going to compare to see which one has the minimum number by adding the current position and the previous path. So I'm going to go ahead and code it up now. Cool. So now when we actually start to code, the first thing I like to do is write my pseudocode. I just write it out in comments because these are the steps I'm going to have to take. Now, these are the specific steps that I just talked you through of having the minimum path. So I start with the very first implementation. This is just creating my array of zeros, simple double for loop. Next thing is setting the initial zero zero, as well as now getting all of the first column and all of the first rows. Now, by the way, there's actually a bug here that I was stuck on for a bit. Let's see if you could figure it out before we get to the bug reveal. But again, this is just two simple loops to fill out the summation of my first row and the summation of my first column because those are the ones that I don't have to do different combinations. So from there, we go over to actually getting the summations of all of the different positions inside of my summations array. All I have to do is I have to add the current value of the specific IJ position on the grid and then just get the minimum of either one position to the left or one position to the top because that minimum is going to give me the shortest path there. And boom, here's the celebration that you always have to have whenever you think you figured it out. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. It did take me a while to figure this one out. My code only worked for squares to the arrays, not for rectangular to the array, because if you look at my first loop, the conditional statement was wrong. Let's go. So that is how that is done. That is the magic. I hope that you saw how the magic works. I hope that this kind of inspired you to really dive into data structures, algorithms, because that's what we did here, right? We were able to kind of get this problem that we had and there we were able to draw it out, kind of come to a solution. And finally, we were able to implement it. So guys, this is why data structures and algorithms are so important. You could just do this. You could get better every single time. I am not a guru, I'm just a regular person. I just worked on enough of these that I was able to kind of figure out what it was that I needed to do next. You can get to this point. In fact, you could probably get even better results than I did. You just have to practice and it's going to take time to get there. It's going to take patience, but we are here for you. So with that being said, I hope you got value from this video. If you did, go ahead, hit that like button, comment below. Let me know what you guys want to see more with data structures and algorithms, because I want to give you guys more value to help you crush it, to help you on your next interview. So you can get that job offer. So you can have that confidence, not be like how I was before, but actually be able to move towards having the goals that you want. All right, guys, that is it for coach Daniel. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.